Hello and welcome to the 12th video in this series introducing neural networks. So now we're at the stage where we need to make the program actually learn. And the way to do this is obviously is to change the way the neural network behaves such that it always gives us the correct output, which is flat to survive. And the way that's done in a neural network is by changing the values of the weights. Now there are lots of ways of changing the values of the weights, a very, very well-known one is something called backpropagation, which we won't be using in, in this series, but maybe in another one. What we're going to do in this series is we're going to use a mutation algorithm to actually change the values of the weights and try and find a set of weights in our neural network that helps the bird survive. And before doing any more coding, I'd just like to quickly go through how this mutation is going to work. So the first thing with mutation is define what's known as fitness. Or in other words, how do you know what the most successful bird was or success was? And this occurs in situations where the outcome is kind of infinite, for example, or you don't know exactly what the 100% best outcome is. Um, what I mean by that is imagine if you have a neural network learning to recognize images um, and the MNIST collection, which I mentioned a few videos back, is, is one of those. You have a definite collection of images with a definite classification of what the image is. And the network knows whether it was right or wrong and by how much. In our case here, we don't really have a definition of right. We want to survive as long as possible, but that's that's nothing that's actually definite or can be defined. We just want to play better and better and last longer and longer. So we use something called a fitness function, which basically is how do we want to define which was the best bird from all the birds that started off in a particular population. And the first one that comes to mind, obviously, is whichever one survives the longest is probably the best one, and that's true. But the problem you get with that, if you just use that, is they often just sit in the corner because they all die at the same time at the top of the screen. And therefore, it's hard to differentiate which one was better maybe than another one. You can, do some uh, through some randomness, uh, eventually end up getting something that survives, but um, my experience is you end up with lots of them stuffed in the corner and you get what's known as a convergence, where it converges on thinking the best thing to do is die in the, the top corner. So to add something else to define how fit the bird is, well, on top of the number of milliseconds that the bird survived, we'll also add a bonus for how close to the middle of a gap the bird actually was. So how are we going to do the mutation then, bearing this in mind? Well, we'll end up with a list of birds, and I've just got 10 here for an example, and we'll have 60, I think, in each population, listed by their fitness, where bird A, in this case, is the, the fittest bird that we've got in a particular population. So at the end of iteration, we'll have a list of birds, and they'll be ordered by this fitness. We're then going to define a mutation cutoff percent, and we'll keep this percentage. In this case, I've taken two birds, and we'll call these our good birds. What we'll then do is we'll take the remaining birds, or the bad birds, and randomly modify some of the weights in all of their neural networks by a little bit. And you'll see this in the code. And then we'll use this mutation bad to keep percentage to randomly select some of our bad birds and we'll keep those. And then we'll splice the good birds that we kept with our randomly selected bad birds who've had their weights lightly modified as sort of a final list. And on this final list then, we're missing still some birds that we need to add on from the original population size. So what we'll do is these children that we need to add on, what we'll do is we will breed from the good birds and we'll select random pairs from the good birds. In this example here, we've only got two, so it'll always be the same pair. And from those pairs, we'll select random weights from each of the neural networks and merge those together to create a child from randomly selected weights from our most successful birds. And then we'll splice these children into the original list with our randomly selected bad and our good birds. And that gives us then the final population to go for the next iteration. Now, there's loads and loads of literature online about all sorts of ways to do mutation in populations. Um, you can Another one that I've used is something called a roulette wheel you, approach. You can have a look at that for trying to select the fittest. But the main point, I think, is to try and keep what was good, uh, try and discard most of what was bad, try and introduce something new, and try and modify slightly what you've already got to mimic real life evolution and eventually mutate to something that uh, plays the game very, very well with the correct mix of weights so that the neural network works as expected. And I actually personally find this part of the whole thing the most fun. And I spend a lot of time playing around with various different ways of mutation and watching them be either very good or, or very, very bad in some cases. So the next couple of videos then what we're going to do is start implementing the concept 
concept that you've seen here inside our code. So that's it then for this video. I uh, hope it, hopefully it makes some sense. And uh, like I said, in the next video, we'll get on with the coding. So thanks for taking the time. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.